Good morning. This is Sherry Blanton, the Southern Gardener from the Aniston Star and Calhoun County Master Gardener because we're not back in the library yet and this time we were going to talk about summer flowers. We came to talk with one of my very, very favorite people in the world, <laughs> Hayes Jackson, Master Gardener, Master Plantsman, my mentor and my competitor. We will talk about that. He's also the director of the Botanical Gardens. He's also an extension agent, and he also knows more about plants than anybody in the United States. You can show him a piece of anything this big, and he says, that's so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so. I haven't gotten those skills. But we're at Longleaf, which is one of our treasures, and we decided we'd walk around and look at the plants, and Hayes is gonna explain what's going on, and I'm gonna ask him some questions, and he's going to answer me, and hopefully I'm gonna learn something, and all of y'all are gonna learn something. So hang in with us, we'll be back at the library, but this is really more fun, because you get to see some wonderful things. Hayes, is this, tell us about this garden right here. Well, we're, we're here in the sensory garden, and the sensory garden was our first garden at Longleaf and we had the help of Aniston Rotary and the idea of the sensory garden are, is plants that have unique texture, unique feel, uh, fragrance either through the flowers or through the foliage uh, and so we've combined a lot of different plants in these raised beds and we, we wanted them in beds where people could sit on the edge and touch and and really get close to the plants. So well, this is our centerpiece here. This is, this is some of your bamboo? This is bamboo from my garden. Which, oh, that gives you an idea how, how big Hayes is. And that's some little bamboo. That's it, some yeah, because I, I've got some big bamboo. I went on a bamboo kick years ago. Yes. And this is a giant morning glory. It has huge leaves and bright pink flowers and uh, we needed something for it to grow on and I like the natural look of the bamboo. Oh, it, I think it's fabulous. Yeah. Is this, uh, I'm guessing this morning glory is a perennial. This is a tropical morning glory and we have to dig it up and pot it and overwinter it in the greenhouse. And, and how far up does it get during every it, season? It will get up to the top depending on how much we water and fertilize. We try to water and fertilize, but when we get a drought like we did, it didn't get as big. And this is the first year we put it on the teepee. A we teepee use, is just wonderful. I, I love it, I love it. And then, of course, underneath is the oh, yeah. gold foliage, uh, a crinum. I picked that up in the Bangkok flower market. Oh, <laughs> and, oh, and uh, so what, what kind of blooms does it have? It has a small white bloom, but uh, the you know. The foliage is just absolutely, it, it's chartreuse, and mm -hmm. you know we can put that in our chartreuse garden whenever we get one. And I always like to play off the, the gold and chartreuse with the blues and the purples, and, and then we got the violet stem and taro and the open air. Which one is this? Because I recognize the red dot. So. Uh, well, this is Fontanziana, which is a, a, a one that has the purple stem. It's been around. We're not done with this bed yet. We're, today we're going to plug in some different uh, annuals in there for some more color and texture, but uh, it's moving in the right direction. What are you going to put in here? Uh, we're, we've got some, we're going to do some of the Wandering Jew the, uh -huh. that's, that's purple. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do some of the uh, Sun Coleus, oh, yeah. and then we're going to do some of the uh, uh, kind of odds and ends, begonias and things that we have for Oh, that's going to be fabulous. So it'll be a well, mixture you, of Yeah, that's, a, that's going to be a great mixture mm -hmm. because the coleus are just superb, especially if you keep them watered. Mm -hmm. So what about this part? Oh, I we, see an yeah. edgeworthia. This was an edgeworthy. Yeah, it's coming it back. It about looks like mine. This, this happens because uh, we yeah. had that really hot, hot fall, and then it rained and the temperatures were mild, everything went into a second growing season. And then in mid-November, we got our first hard freeze mm -hmm. of 20 degrees. So we went from no, really, really no, no frost to 20 degrees and it damaged a lot of things. And you, think that, you think that's gonna come back? It's, there, it's putting out side buds. Right here, do you think it's gonna come back for you? Uh, I, I don't think it's going to, it's going to come back where you, we've got these leaf buds back. Would you take it down to let it start all over again, or is it too interesting to cut down? Well, I'm, I'm waiting to see if... Well, I see, I yeah, see, see, I see, I see it it's coming, coming back. Well, 
I lost mine last year. I don't know if it was with that terrible drought, and I'm thinking that's what it was because mine was about that big, and I lost it. And knowing that you had one, I had to get one somewhere else. Do you so have the red one? There's one oh, that blooms red and orange, but oh, a red it, and it's orange. hard to come by, yeah, and it's, it's finicky. One, though, well, mine died too, so okay. that's in the drought. Well, I, I just, but the one thing that we have to mention about the Edgeworthia is it blooms in the winter, and it is a relative of the Daphne, and it smells heavenly, and it's got these little beautiful little yellow flowers. They're not like dynamite, but they wave in the breeze, and they smell so good. And when you're so hungry for something pretty, this is blooming. So I love it. And it's our fragrance aspect of the sensory garden. And, it and is the buds, when they before they open, are very yes. velvety oh, yes. and silver colored. So we get a we get a, a touch can, aspect out of you it can too. See, you can see the little tiny, but I mean it is it is astounding. And now what was this right here? This is another. That one. was one, and we that one was. I scratch test that one, and the two on the end were dead, and and then these were still green. So, but we'll probably we may end up cutting these back so they're all even. They they do they do have a beautiful shape. Yeah. And this is which magnolia? That is teddy bear, and I'm gonna get a leaf off of it. Now it does it drop leaves 24 seven? Well, it's a magnolia. So it drops leaves 24 <laughs> and it's just getting ready to bloom so that's going to be for your fragrance oh let's it's got oh, that, how it's, neat. it's almost like velvet and, oh let's see this and oh so, yeah oh how that is just oh it's wonderful it, I, I i don't have this one it's a, it's a dwarf and and i think it's better than little jim because i think it's fuller i like it the, is it I has like a better a better little shape jam get, gets like and, and I like Little Jim. I've well, got I it do, in the front, but I, I like, like this one better. I like mm -hmm. Little Jim, but it it got a lot bigger. Are you you think you're at maximum growth here on this one? Well, we'll see. Uh, you know, the they they ping, tend to keep growing, so you know they'll say that it gets up to about 15, 20 feet. Well, they said Little Jim was a courtyard plant. Yeah, they said it was eight feet. And the one at the temple yeah. is bigger than the building. Mm -hmm. So we will walk around and see what else is in this. Should we go around this way? Let's go around this way and see what's growing. Um, hey y'all, if y'all don't have one, people okay. that are watching, this is a fabulous plant. Oh There's my goodness. We've got one bloom in here. I'm going to see if I can smell it. Oh, how fabulous. Can I give them a... I'll give them one that's sort of wilted. That one doesn't smell as good. And what's this? That is Sarissa, which is a plant that's utilized in bonsai quite a bit. Oh, and, and it's got interesting leaves on it. I don't a, know if the camera can get to it, and I don't want to break any of it off, but it's gorgeous, variegated. And tell us about this one. It, it, it's an evergreen that is uh, probably zone seven and south. It's uh, uh, the variegation on that to me is what is so oh, interesting. It's it kind of got a, a rim of white and then a streak, and then you get some variation and and some of all the white, uh, pure white grows. And where did this come from? Uh, I brought this back from uh, China, and I was, it was in the market in China, and we selected a nice variegated clone. And, and of course, I had a permit to bring. You know, yes, I, I, yes I, he's I, allowed. I'm allowed to bring stuff in. So, so he throws all of his clothes away and fills up his suitcase with plants. <laughs> he comes back <laughs> naked, but with a lot of plants. Now these are Nandinas. I'm, yes, this is, and this is supposed to be a sterile form, and you. And you do not get the berries, which we're seeing a lot of problems with Nandina uh, naturalizing and taking over. Especially, I know down a, a buddy of mine is a horticulturist in Florida, Panhandle, and it's really bad down there taking over. But these this dwarf varieties are sterile. Do you know what the name of this is? I, I want to. Gosh, now we're on camera, and I think I, I think it's Gulf Stream. That's right. It's Gulf Stream. I think it's Gulf Stream. Hey, guess what? You have got it. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> But this, I got this and thing. I love I love Nandina for the one the color and the, the texture is why I use this 
and, and it's and it has it's, it's almost gorgeous. like bamboo yeah it has a, a wonderful texture on yeah it. i think i just planted one of these but i can't remember where i did it but i'm pretty sure oh i planted it at the pocket park mm -hmm. yeah and i'm pretty sure it's called gulf stream and it is feral just an aside i'm seeing a lot of sunshine ligustrum like chick-fil-a they planted a lot and they're all dead they're all they're all leafless so they have no leaves on them well you know i, I wonder too you know it can go in the winter it can lose its leaves yes and it may have done that because of that early freeze but what scares me to death with that plant is that it's horribly invasive and of course they say it is sterile but yeah. uh but ligustrum is notorious they've introduced the variegated form and the variegated form easily reverts and produces well, seedlings that are not variegated well, so you know all the master gardeners ditched theirs well good uh, good for them they did everybody i know except the ones at cane creek but all the master gardeners i know ditched their i just don't trust it, it is probably the worst plant has done more damage to our environment yes. the woodland environment yeah. here well in Cowling i just County. noticed when i had mine that all the leaves died off and it just didn't look pretty but everybody i know has pitched theirs and i'm going to watch those because they look really terrible at chick-fil-a well you know we talk about kudzu being yeah. invasive but kudzu it, it it moves into plant uh, to uh, an area that's already been disturbed you know it, it doesn't move into a pristine forest right it looks for it, it looks for and it, it, it and, and ligustrum will go into a pristine forest and overtake and just shade out the herbaceous oh, yeah. layer all the yeah. wildflowers and when i tell people cut the berries off they go cut the berries off. yeah cut the berries off if you want to have it in your yard, you've got to remove the berries. But the best thing is don't have one. Yeah. And they look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> but that's all right. You want to look at this one right here? This is a, yeah. Look around this way. Let's look at this what one. What is that beautiful thing? This, again, this is for texture. And, and this isn't supposed to grow here. This is a black elderberry, and it's the European species. So it doesn't like the heat of the south, but... I, I think it's so cool of a plant. It I, I said I'm, so and, I, and I only cool. planted one because I said if it doesn't make it, you know. It is, um, and I see the leaves come out green and then they turn they black. They turn black and the flowers are oh, come out pink and fade to a white. Oh, so wow. Now, where really did nice. this come from? I bought this at a nursery in Birmingham, and uh, and it it they had a couple and they didn't look good, but. I just I love that texture and and once we got it in the raised bed and it, we have irrigation we've got uh, now this year uh, Patricia and Fred Womack uh, Patricia is our, our greenhouse manager they came in last week and we put in uh, soaker hoses so it'll be easier to wa keep everything watered. I think I recognize this mm -hmm. but instead of being so go ahead and tell me what it is. This is uh, winter hazel. The, That's what I mm -hmm. thought. Coralopsis. Uh, uh, Does it root? You know, I don't know. I haven't tried to root. You know, the tornado took mine. Oh. And no. I haven't been able to get another one. What is so fabulous about this plant is it gets little tiny yellow bells on it. Sometime December, January, mm -hmm. about January. You think? January, February. Yeah. And they're teensy, but they're so and fragrant. Dear. A precious. Anyway, when I came out the day after the tornado, it was gone, and I was sad because I really, really love to have, because I, anything that grows in a different time of the year, because everybody can have something in the summer, but not everybody can have something in the winter, so I know. Yeah, anything winter, and in fact, they call it uh, buttercup winter hazel. And it, it is Coralopsis possiflora, which means little flower. And they are little they tiny, are little, but but they make a show because there's so many oh, of them. Oh, it's wonderful! And this is a fabulous plant over here. Yeah, we've got to look at this. And it's, oh, it's, you got to look at this one. It's not quite but it's in its prime. There. It's, getting it's getting there. It's getting there. And that kind of looks like a pineapple, so mm -hmm. we call this one pineapple lily. And uh, this plant grabs more attention once these. Uh, the pineapples get above the foliage. And, uh, I mean, can you see on the camera? It looks just like a pineapple. And it was one of my prize plants at the pocket park, and somebody stole it. And I was 
Well, at least they saying, had good taste. I know. <laughs> they took several plants that they had good taste, but it, when I called the police, he said, what's it worth? And he said, I said, it's been here five years. I don't know what it's worth, $100. He just looked at me, but can, can y'all get that in? It's just, you know, this plant's pretty easy to find, and it also comes with a black leaf. Yeah, or but I've Sparkman never, Burgundy is the variety. It's I've more never, common, actually. I've never seen it get so big. It loves it here. And, and, it does. And we, one thing we did, uh, we got uh, uh, the good soil. We, we backfilled uh, and got in some really good uh, topsoil and, and in these raised beds. So that makes a that big difference. Is just, I've never, mine never get like this. And also, mine get real tall and fall over and I have to stake them. Do these get real tall? They can and they will eventually, especially if you get a thunderstorm wind and, and they, they so can I, do that. So I, I will try to stake them, but mm -hmm. that is one of the neatest plants. If you ever see it anywhere, you need to have one. And of course, this is a gorgeous Sumagashi, this is Japanese maple variety. Is that a palmatum or is that? It's a palmatum and uh, there's, there's of course japonicums and shirasawanums, but you don't see those much in Alabama. Uh, most people grow just the regular palmatums, wow. but we can grow them all, but you gotta, the shirasawanum likes a, a lot of shade and some I haven't water. even seen one of those around, but I'm sure you just I've got, got a, one. Yeah, I've, I've got I a few. Got Quite, quite a few. Um, <laughs> hey, I do have one. I do know now I have one japonicum. So yeah. That, I don't, that, the japonicums that, that, have bigger leaves, which oh, I yeah. like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mine's in a pot. So. Now, this is, this, and this obviously takes full sun. Yeah, yeah. A lot of these, a lot of the maples, it, it's really, there's, you know, thousands of varieties, and some of them are very heat tolerant. And, and he has every one. Uh, not quite. I'm working on it. He but. is working on <laughs> it. But, uh, but I do find some are better suited to Alabama and some are better suited to uh, Illinois. You know, it, it, uh, some of them like a, uh, the cooler cooler weather. So Are those, what have you got around We've there? got some dwarf uh, Sasanqua camellias. Oh, yeah. Now, do you prune yours? Yeah, these have been pruned. Uh, this is mine are way bigger than that. Yeah, do I we, need to prune them? Well, you can, if you, and we want to maintain them low, so we, I do too. Yeah, so you can, you can. So prune. when, what time of the year are you pruning them? Uh, I'm, you want to prune them uh, after they bloom. After they bloom, so you're going to so get them. Yeah, because these winter. are sasanquas, so they're going to sasanquas bloom earlier, and they're really, they're really, really great. There's a japonica camellia and a sasanqua. And then there's a whole lot more, but most people don't talk about them. This is a great plant, and it's not hard to find, and it's it's tough. And camellias, again, we, you know, we mentioned winter flowers, and, yep. and the garden needs the garden color needs in the winter. Color and, in and, the and, winter. And, and anything that blooms in the winter, I'm going to plant it because I'm starving yep. for color in the winter besides our annual color. But the camellias, I have them blooming in my garden eight months out of the year. I still. My bonanza are just quit. Yeah, they it can. just stopped. And I also look like Betty Sheffield had a few on her. Mm -hmm. Not many, but my bonanza had several on it. And I meant to take a picture and send it to you to say that you were not the only <laughs> one that had one. Is this pink muley? This is pink muley grass. And oh boy. I'm this glad, I'm, you know, I've been, there are a lot of grasses, a lot of good grasses, a lot of tough grasses. I've never been a fan of, of of doing tons of grasses because they just one it's a lot of maintenance and two uh, you you uh, my first gra they we get a lot of thunderstorm winds and with the taller grasses they get blown over and I, I that drives me crazy so I took mine out and, but this one doesn't and this oh. this is a nice oh. This texture is amazing, and when and it does a pink bloom that looks like a cloud. Oh, over I over. know. And, and when we went to the beach, every yard had them, mm -hmm. and in big clumps. So when you walk down, it was just like pink clouds everywhere. So naturally, I had to get two, even though I didn't have room, and I stuck them in. But yours is looking really good. Now these don't bloom till the fall, but they hold on. Yours looks. This and, and the this is I wanted this grass in this 
in this design because to me it's the ultimate texture grass with that it very is. cloud. And it when is. I went to the nursery uh, at that time, and they only had two, so I bought them both, or, or, or actually maybe it was, I think it was four, and I got two in each bed. So, uh, but I, it's best in a, if you can do a big sweeping mass of it, it oh, really yeah. makes a show. Oh yeah, and there's a white one too, yeah. that mm -hmm. I saw at the beach. And what is this interesting? This, this is a native, uh, and by the way, this is a native too. Yeah, and this is this is Quethra, also oh, yeah. called summer sweet, yes. and the name comes from the sweet smelling blooms yes. that and occur we, in the summertime. And, and you can see, yeah, they're the, starting to come on. They're starting to come on. Now, are y'all obsessed with compulsive like I am? You have to come out and cut out every dead limb. Well, we we should be, but we have very we're, we're short, always short. Well, you staff. know, you could pay me a penny a limb. And I would be out here for days cutting out dead limbs because that's like a dead limb. I've got to get it out of here. And well, what is this? What are, that's fire spike. That's what I thought it was. And uh, I love fire spike. I love it too. You know, I, and I, I, I've, I discovered fire spike at a. I was in Montgomery probably twenty something years ago, I, and it was planted along a house, and I didn't know what it was. And I just, pull, being a plant geek, I, I stopped and talked and to the people and they gave me a, actually they pulled up an entire plant and gave me. Now this blooms really, really late. Yes. And sometimes mine gets knocked off by the frost. Well, and it, it will usually start blooming uh, late September, early October. Yeah, depending yeah. if we have some cold. Mm -hmm. And let's see, walking around here, here's some, I think these plants are always new. Not too many. Is that a gardenia? Yeah, that's that's another uh, result of the November yeah. sudden hard freeze after the, having the growing season. But I see it's getting ready to bloom. And is this uh, daisy? That is daisy, the little dwarf form. Which I, to me, it, it just like having a camellia uh, in your garden in Alabama. You got to have gardenias because of the fragrance. Are they also called plant hardy or plant hardy different? From you know, there's, I, there's, that's an ongoing debate, and 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 I think a lot of times there's there's probably they're they're different plants, but they're so similar, uh, it's hard to tell them apart. I have a hay story. I picked up the phone and I knew it was his voice. He said, "Go to Marvin's. They have daisy gardenias and kissimmee azaleas." <laughs> so I got in the car because I always do what I'm told, and went over, and I got my daisy, and I got my kiss of me, and both of them are still good. Oh, good. Well, my, da my daisy now, is, it was up like this, and it took a hit, but the gardenias in the sun took a worse hit than the ones in the shade, because yes. I, I think that was part of the... Now, see, I, I, I would be real upset with compulsive, and I'd have to cut off every dead one. These are, these come up with just big sprays of pink flowers that the butterflies and the bees like. And and you can buy these at Lowe's. And and they're great if you're trying to have a butterfly garden or a pollinator garden. Oh, and I see some of my there. Paige and I would like to have a chartreuse garden. Mm -hmm. You can do it. I've got it. You know, I've got my potting shed is painted cobalt blue. Oh, good And one. I'm doing all gold plants all around gold. it. Uh -huh. so Florida sunshine anise and things. Oh, I got a sunshine anise. Mm -hmm. This is tell us its real name, and then I'll tell you what we call it. Well, you know, it, it's a it's a golden thread cypress. It's a wonderful. And and, and, and look at look, the more sun it gets, the more chartreuse mm -hmm. it gets. It is a wonderful. Do you ever tip from yours? Uh, you know, we haven't, but we might have to start because they are getting. You know, we. Uh, originally, I had planted a dwarf Laura petalum in this bed mm -hmm. that was only supposed to get three mm -hmm. feet, but well, it, it was eight feet in just a matter of four years. So, well, really, I, really, the, I like the chartreuse better mm -hmm. than the Laura petalums. Are sort of, I mean, they're nice, but they don't say anything. Whereas this, mine has changed from the Laura petalum to the Laura petalum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I because it's not in as much sun, and I hate it because the chartreuse 
Tennessee brought me two little pieces of this and she said you're gonna love this well, and I do it, it, oh, it blooms do. all the time I do and see it doesn't get mold and mildew mm -hmm. on it mine's already quit blooming that was it, it has it is seems like it has bloomed almost almost year-round oh, it's my just and, and and I'm gonna be pushing this uh, for a good good plant and, and, and it, the bright pink blooms and the, and the pollinators beautiful. love it mm -hmm. And right here we have the, uh, oh, what, tell us what this is. That is fascinating. Yeah, this is, you know, and I've had problems growing this. I've, I've tried several of these in my garden. Yeah. This is actually a, a, a blue atlas cedar, and it's a weepy oh, form. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you it has know, to be I, trained. I had one. It died. Yeah, they, they don't. It died. And you know what's weird? I, get, I go to Atlanta, and you see them growing in Atlanta. But I think we're just a little hotter than Atlanta, yeah, and, it does. and 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 they just uh, don't. They, I, I've seen some around, but they just have a problem well, here. You but don't again, see raised anymore. raised bed, good drainage. Uh, well, I, it's I think neat it's though. Is health. this? Are you doing this one for touch? Yes, that one's for for texture and, and touch. I and, hated that mine died, but it did. And and we'll have to train this up because and we'll select we just pruned it back because the limbs had kind of gotten out uh, how are you going to prune it up though? they're pretty you have to stiff. yeah you have to start we're going to start with a uh we'll take one as a new growth that's kind of more uh oh, supple flexible and and get that going i hate it that mine died i think during the Nora gave it to me mm -hmm. and over here i know this, this is this windmill or windmill? no this is an alabama native uh, this is saw palmetto, right. and if, uh, of course, it, you, people know of the word saw palmetto now because of the uh, nutrition that people say it helps with 
with prostate issues so you can buy the they use the fruit and and harvest the fruit so it they're actually having issues now with the fruit being over harvested so it's not reproducing That's just but really neat. It's, I love, I love the shape. I love the texture of the palm, and, and this is a, a, mm -hmm. a low spreading clustering one, and, and this is actually a blue form. And How big will it get? It, over time, it, in, in a couple of hundred years, it could be up here. <laughs> They're so very slow be, growing. You'll be out here pruning it then. Uh, yeah, you'll so be with in modern a medicine, yeah, yeah. Well, you'll be in a wheelchair, and you'll mm -hmm. have a special pruner for old people. Mm -hmm. but, People are using more palms in traditional gardens because we used to think of palms just in tropical gardens, but palms are starting to turn up in just regular gardens just as an accent point. And we, I, we must go over and look at that plant because it is a star and I cannot believe it. If you saw that pitiful one yours. Oh, and we need a clap for this one, yay! <laughs> This is uh, a starburst. Came out of his yard. This is a plant I discovered uh, growing on my property. I just can't believe the size. I just cannot. But mine is just you know like. Yeah, and look at that. That's this is that's I typical mean, of the bloom. Uh, and um, did Plant Delights name it and put it out? Uh, actually, it wasn't Plant. Know? It wasn't Plant Delights. It was Ted Stevens from oh, Nurseries Carolina. Yeah, okay. He says, you need to be propagating that. And he goes, and I so I gave him cutting. So he, he took it and propagated. He has a, a nursery company and he actually introduced it at the National Hydrangea Society and it kind of went over pretty well. So, uh, but I've ended up, I've got a patent on this in Europe. So it's patented in Europe, but it's not patented in the US. How did it get? Okay, we see it's in full sun. Mm -hmm. How did it? I don't know what I'm doing wrong with mine because it's a little. Well, and, and you know, I, I've I tried a lot of things out here this in full sun. The Edgeworthia normally takes a little bit of shade. Mm -hmm. uh, your hydrangeas, I did the Invincible oh, hydrangea yes. in full sun, yeah. just just to see how as, if as long as you we had good soil and water, how they would do, and they've done well. This is this is just. I bought mine at one of the sales, and I thought I lost it last year, and I didn't. But I don't know if you can get a close-up of how gorgeous this flower is. Now, what do you think made hay starburst in your yard? It is just, I, I, there's a lot of, there's a big population of native, uh, and this is, there are two native hydrangeas in Alabama, the oak leaf, and then the arborescence, which is the woods hydrangea. And uh, there's just uh, a lot of genetics there. I actually had two married. seedlings that did this, not just one, but there were two. And, and so we, we populated it all over Calhoun County because we sold it at one of our plant sales. So it can live on and on and on and on and on. Sometimes real gardeners, real uh, intense gardeners, will give away pieces of even things they love more than life because they know somebody else has it and if something happens to theirs they know they can go over to somebody else's house and get a little pizza well my original plant the bowls got and it died oh, so okay. if i would have not i mean and it was shortly after i shared it uh it wouldn't be here so. now look this is this one looks like it's sitting on it's in a flower it's a flower but it usually goes no, no seed no seed oh boy what's this uh-huh what is that? Have you not grown this? No, what is it? This is society garlic. Oh no, I haven't. I haven't. I've never, I've heard of it. But uh, yeah, I love it. And I it's love this gorgeous. for the flowers. And so it's beautiful in flower, but the coolest thing is, as I get, especially when I get a group out here, I have them break a leaf off and smell it. So we get the sense of smell it. It is garlicky. It's really garlicky. Can you eat it? Um, I guess you could eat it, but it's, it it's an edible. It's it's ornamental, but uh, it but it it's it is a um, well, from some, south of some it, South Africa. Wow, well, I see some fabulous, fabulous plants. Tell us about this yarrow. Yeah, this is my favorite yarrow. It's a pollinator plant, and for those 
we translate pollinator. If you're trying to get a bee, a butterfly, garden, this is the kind of plant to have. And this is coronation gold. It is. Now, it can spread in a garden. Does this one spread like well, them? This is a clumper. Now, some of them are, are, are spread. And, and you notice, we have, this bed was very narrow, mm -hmm. and it's next to concrete. Mm -hmm. So I knew this was going to be hot and dry. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 that's why I put it there. It loves, it can take the dry soil, it can take poor soil. But uh, I love that color. I love the way it holds the flowers. I don't know if y'all can see it. This is just absolutely magnificent. Now, how, do y'all propagate it, or does it, you just, to make more, do you do that little piece? You would probably divide that clump. We could pop up the whole clump and, and reset it. Not that I was going to ask. Oh, okay. Well, we won't do it today, but. <laughs> and, and what kind is this? This is another Serenoa. And I love what you said. We're seeing a lot of people using palms now because, one, uh, they're native palms. Uh, two, the roots do not uh, buckle. So if you've got a confined space with sidewalks, uh, it, it, you know, like if you use the windmill palm, it it has a nice vertical element. So we're it's textured. Mm -hmm. and, and I love. And in the winter, you got all deciduous plants. You got something green, and we're really gardeners are really into having different textures in their yard. No longer is it just a bland yard. Yeah, and not just color. It's, not and, just and, color. And I, the thing I see, so many gardens are spring geared. Yes. You've got all your azaleas and everything mm -hmm. comes in spring and, and after that there's not a lot of color. And what is this? This is, this is another yard? This is another odd plant. And, you know, I, I grew this as a kid uh, because I always thought it looked like a, a desert plant to me and mm -hmm. it does like well drained and this is all bad I've grouped things that like it kind of hot and dry this is Santalina I told you he was a genius <laughs> I have seen this yeah. I love it and, and, and it's it's kind of it's aromatic you can brush the foliage and get that that fragrance mm. and, it, it, and, and I the, love the color yeah that, that is, color is amazing now does it last in the winter, does it, it does. Does it never green ground cover? Uh, it does, but it, it benefits from occasional hard pruning because it will get kind of overgrown. So every so often we come back and cut it pretty hard. And it comes in a green form as well. I've never green... seen that sold around here. Yeah, I you don't seen, see it. I have seen it in magazines and catalogs, but I've never seen it grown. Wow, I love that. I and just... seeing that, that fine, fine texture, with this texture, with this oh, large yeah. texture, and, and it gives colors. you contrast. Oh, yeah. And that's what yeah. catches your eye when you have yeah. contrast. Well, yeah. If you want to learn to be a landscaper, listen to him. <laughs> you know, landscaping is not just about putting out 20 azaleas. Landscaping is taking into mind that that is dry. This is dry. Because the biggest mistake people make is they put dry stuff and wet stuff in the no, same grouping, flower bed. Yeah. Everybody's got to have their like spaces. Yeah, so all this we can, you know, uh, if, and we can run this uh, irrigation less. And, I, and, of course, having the concrete over there makes it hotter and hotter. And so uh, are these likely to stand the more uh, the alkaline from all this mortar, or does it do they mine? Uh, they can take that. It's yeah, the, and of course that's the concrete. So you will get some. If they need that alkalinity, they can pull. The roots will pull. Okay. It in. This I is one of yours. Oh, <laughs> this is one of my favorites. But mine is huge. Uh, do you? Did you prune this? No. It, it's just it's slower being in this raised bed and it's hot out here. And it, I think this is one. I, I wanted this plant in here because oh, of the te winter texture. Oh, this is and Harry Lauder's walking stick. And I have a picture of it in the winter in the snow. And I don't know if you can tell, it's called a contorted filbert. It has some ornamental filberts on it, not very many. But the, it, the gray habit is so contorted that it's really almost better bare than it is with leaves. It, it, it's it one is. that I think... It's showier in the winter oh, time. Oh, it's mm -hmm. just 
I've had people stop and ask me what mine was, and I don't think you can, pro I think it's difficult to propagate, or... You can root them. I, I know Doris Balkum rooted one and gave me one, and uh, and I, I don't think they're easy to root. She must have, had, she, of course, she had the magic touch, but... I, uh, bought, I bought mine in the nursery, and... They're not, they're not that hard to find. It's Harry Lauder's Walk and Stick. Mm -hmm. And every yard needs to have one of these for winter interest. And I see you've got some more, a great, couple of great, you've got some, oh yeah. This is another must have for Alabama. Yeah. What is this one? That is Germaine's gyration. I have one. Yeah, and it kind of grows I didn't know wide it. and those, the limbs kind of contort. Lord, Oh, it would get this big yeah. electric car. What am I going to do with it? <laughs> and uh, it, it produces a lot of seed. I collected a bunch of seed last year, and I'm going to, I planted them hoping they'll grow. It, let's show you this right here. They look like little flowers, and when they drop off, they're like little helicopters. And they will all come up to be more trees. This is a terrific plant. I mean, if you don't have this in the south, you're really missing out. It, is this salvia gregii? It is. Uh, this is uh, salvia gregii. It's a uh, Texas native salvia. Of course, I think all the salvias are good because they they give us uh, good color. They attract hummingbirds and pollinators, mm -hmm. uh, and, and they just are uh, wonderful plants. And a lot of them are aromatic. Mm -hmm. So They're this very one, this one has a nice smell to the foliage. Sometimes when I'm messing in mine, I, I, I come in and my husband thing. says, you've been in the Texas salvia, Sherry, I can smell yeah. it. Come over and let's look at this red. Yeah, they come in all different colors. Oh, White, yeah. pink, red, purple. Hey, I got a purple. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, where did I get it? I don't know. <laughs> but I bought, I bought lots of these from y'all. This is just a terrific plant in hot sun. Now what I do do, I don't know if you do this, but Jason Powell said, Woo! Come back and cut them no. and let them start. They get too woody. This yeah. one's kind of getting there. So we, the, we would uh, we'd probably cut this one back pretty soon. Yep. But, if you um, pay me a penny, I'll give you all. <laughs> but you actually just come in in February and just cut it to the ground and it comes right back because if you if you let it be it does get kind of unattractive and woody mm -hmm. and right over here oh look at this one. this is Rebecca Maxim oh this and is fresh it, it does kind of clump out and it will occasionally reseed. I see we usually try to pop up our seedlings down here and grow them. But if you go to Birmingham to their railroad park downtown, they've utilized this a lot in that landscaping. Yes. Uh, I mean, these, are, these are what you call the wow factor. Yeah. Wow, look <laughs> at that. And yeah. again, it's got that big leaf, it's got the big flower. And it's absolutely wonderful. And what is that the same as? Did we see this? Yeah, one this, on? that's Summer Sweet Cluster again. I think mine died. Yep. Oh, we're going to walk around and see something. Oh, you got to see this one. This one's putting on a show. Oh, gosh. Is that one plant? Please this don't tell me that's plant. Okay, this I feel three. better now. This is um, Hydrangea arborescent, which is the same as Hay Starburst, but it's a pink form, and it's called Invincible Spirit. I have and one of these. and uh, these were put out, and uh, the portions of it I think go to help breast cancer. So when you buy the plant, you're supporting. And that that, that one's pretty easy. Now I cut mine back in the winter. You can cut them back. They bloom on new growth, unlike our blue hydrangeas, which. which which some will, but if you cut a lot of your blue hydrangeas, you cut them back, they won't bloom. But I think I do cut mine back. Do y'all cut yours back? I don't cut it back. I haven't cut it back yet, but because it stays. And I had the same when I posted pictures of this. All my gardening friends, like, how do you prune it to get it to stand up? And I said, yes. I don't. It's just in full sun. It takes all that sun. Well, mine's in full sun, and it flops a little bit, but doesn't flop. This 
one doesn't flop anywhere near like the Annabelle does. Annabelle is Annabelle is the, the one with the, the big double blooms that are heavy, yeah. Hayes, tell us about this gorgeous Lantana. Well, and you know, Lantana can be, uh, in South Alabama, it's an invasive plant on the beaches. Uh, in North Alabama, they have to grow uh, a hardy form. There's one called Miss Huff uh, that, that is probably the hardiest lantana, but this is one called, uh, it, it actually is a seedling from my garden off Pink Caprice. So it is a perennial variety and it's, uh, I love them because the butterflies mm -hmm. adore this plant mm -hmm. uh, and the hummingbirds do too. So, it, and it takes the heat, it takes the sun, uh, and it, it's and just a long blooming it. plant. The other one I like is called New Gold, and it's oh, a ground yeah. cover. And I have not seen any New Gold. They have it now. I saw, I've seen oh, it around. Oh, so. but I, I will tell you that last year I got, um, at the Pocket Park, I got some kind of a lantana bug or something, and it just, it destroyed my the, lantana. The thrips will get on it, and you won't get any blooms, and you get this just a, a, a plant that the leaves look like they've been dusted, you know. Um, let me mention just two things about lantana. I'm noticing this one has little thorns on it. Yeah, a lot of them do. And there's one more thing. These berries are extremely toxic and and therefore would be very attractive to children playing a tea party. They look so like if, a blueberry or a blackberry. Yeah, yeah, they look like something you eat when they ripen. So if you have them, and and don't turn your little people loose with the tea party set because they are they are we didn't talk about that most of the most all plants can be toxic if they're eaten but this one the berries are really attractive let's walk over and look at the tea olive this is, this is, tea olive. This tea olive is, this. This is just your common tea olive yeah. osmanthus fragrance and of course fragrance refers to the yep. fragrance of the blooms Boy, but does it smell good. It's kind of an apricotty and uh, perfume smell, and it just wafts through the garden. And, and, and I've got these all in my garden. It's and, tough as nails. And it's a tough evergreen, takes sun, takes shade. Typically, we like to give them a little bit of shade, uh, but um, but it, it's a great plant for uh, for fragrance in the garden, especially late, uh, probably late summer through fall, and, and it will then, bloom through the winter. And, and yeah, then it will be sporadic. The other thing about this, if you're looking for a shade, a, not shade, excuse me, a privacy hedge, mm -hmm. this is, this is great. And whenever you buy something like that, if you can afford a three gallon, you get a little more warmth for your money. Because they, my sister has these, and they are as big as her house. It's a and, small tree, yeah. And she limbs hers up and leaves hers tremendous, but it's a great privacy screen. I mean, I would not turn it into a hedge, because that's not what it's for. But if you just want to give yourself some privacy from your neighbors, and when we did retree Jacksonville, that was what we heard over and over and over, privacy. So we gave tea olives away people whose fences were gone and their bushes were gone so they could have a little bit of privacy. Hey, so have we, have we about walked around and I, seen? I think we've seen a good, uh, most of the things. Uh, so yeah. we'll, we'll walk into the building and Hayes is going to talk a little bit about the botanical gardens and then the most exciting thing is he's going to take me down to the greenhouse and I'm going to go shopping and I have a blank check. <laughs> So next time you come to my house, I, I, I actually called him the other day to tell him that I had gotten Villa Toronto because two days before I gotten an email from him telling me which two Japanese maples he got. So I had got one he already had, but he, he gave me a little update on one of my maples that I didn't really understand what the name was. And you know, that is the great thing about knowing a gardener. If you're passionate about gardener, there's always somebody who can tell you something to make enrich your gardening experience, to help you be a better gardener, to encourage you, to teach you the delight of gardening. And gardening has 
just skyrocketed. And, and you know, funny you mentioned that too. I, I, I got up this morning and as I was leaving, I've got a crinum in full bloom. Oh. And it came from a dear friend of mine that passed away a few years oh, ago, yeah. Rua Peoples. Oh, and, yeah. and from, Rua worked yeah. at the Ivy Elephant and, and I said, good morning, Rua. And it was good because it was, it, 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 it opened up this morning. What, is it the white and pink one? It's the white and pink crying. Yeah, that you see everywhere. Mm -hmm. One time Hayes called me, he said, I'm in Rainbow City and they've got these crinums that you really need. So I got in my car and I rode, I think it's Rainbow oh, City. We have a crinum here. Y'all want to see it before? Yeah. yeah it's stuck. One more plant. See, this is what plant people do. This is a plant. And a good friend of mine, Jinx Farmer, has a crinum nursery. And oh. he sells crinums all over the country. And he came and spoke here at the garden a several years ago. And this is his hybrid. And it's kind of hidden over here behind this. Rebecca Maxwell. Oh my goodness. But this is this is uh, uh, Aurora Glorialis. He named it and it's named after his uh, uh Yeah, that's his very mm -hmm. different from Yeah, it has a, the flowers kind of fade to a pink, so it's kinda of going past its do you, prime. Do you snip off your heads to keep the energy in the plant or does it matter because i cut mine back yeah i normally and actually and i saved some seed and planted some seed last year so uh but uh but yeah that's an unusual crinum but uh i know he that's what he, he ships them all over the country probably oh, all over the world that's gorgeous too. the other thing i have to say about hayes is um if you ever look at my facebook page or southern down in the corner it says Sherry Branton, Master Gardener, lives to find a plant that Hayes doesn't have. And I would go into nurseries and I'd say, y'all know Hayes? And they say, yeah. I said, can you find anything in here that he doesn't have? That failed miserably on every <laughs> trip. And my husband called me the Mad Gardener and I inherited that trait. Hayes taught me to love flowers. I didn't understand the joy that you get from gardening, but if you're around Hayes, you understand what it is to look at these things and to love them and how much peace you can get. And I think people need some, they need some peace right now. Garden, look at flowers, plant something unusual, push the envelope, put something in the wrong place and see what happens. And then when it doesn't, work you can write to the southern gardener's email and say you said this and it doesn't work huh <laughs> i'll say ask Hayes. <laughs> well and everybody has a different you know like i would have never thought of putting some of these things you know any land like when i did landscaping putting a hay starburst or edgeworthy in full sun but when it's when you, it's your garden it's a lot of garden, times you, you can, can play push the and push them i around. remember that in the winter you you bulbed up some of your plants with oh yeah christmas tree lights to keep them going mm -hmm. i ain't gotten that far yet you haven't gotten that far yeah but i got a pineapple guava it may get christmas tree lights it's just, see, all you need is just five or ten degrees sometimes and, and a lot of times it's just getting that plant big enough and getting it established oh that's all right i'm gonna be babying it because that is a <laughs> i saw that you had said that blooming miracles had pineapple guavas and i said oh in the car out i go that's that's a neat nursery they they have a lot of these that's a good local nursery with a lot of variety and nice people yeah who knows something about the plants and they see us quite a bit because we're always looking new shipments out not for sale yet though <laughs> Well, you ready to go get something to drink? Because it's hot out here. Yeah, come let's on, let's go into the air conditioning. <laughs> so, Hayes, why don't you tell us how you became involved in the Longleaf Botanical Gardens? Well, I guess the gardens uh, were came about through extension. We had a, as one of my programs was to develop a botanical garden. We knew there was community interest, and as an extension agent, we go into the community and kind of look for community needs of what uh, the community wants as far as programs or um, anything of that sort. So we had the need there. People were wanting a botanical garden. So we, we actually tried to get this uh, facility. This is the old Linlock Community Center. And when we tried to get this facility several years ago, the I just don't think the timing was right. Uh, there was a, uh, 
keeping the base closed and and we we thought we could kind of come in and develop the garden and it just wasn't right but it kind of happened so it was basically through a community need through extension and it, as one of my programs i had a group of volunteers that worked here and we kind of developed the existing grounds as a botanical garden so it kind of kind of grew out of that Today we only went through a portion of the grounds. Mm -hmm. We went through the sensory garden area. Right. What other areas do you have here at the Botanical Gardens? Well, we have a, across from the sensory gardens, we have a tropical cascade garden, which is a, a grouping of tropical perennials uh, centered around the waterfall. We have a kind of a synoptic garden of edible plants, of uh, things from peaches to figs to blueberries to tea, tea plants, uh, curcuma, which is turmeric. Uh, we have some uh, a banana collection, ornamental banana collection. We have a pollinator garden. We also have a collection of ginger lilies. We're doing some evaluation with rosemary cultivars that are suitable for central Alabama. And uh, there are just a few other beds of, uh, of plant material, of things that are just of interest. And we're, we have a uh, interest in native plants as well. And so we're We've got a nice nature trail too that kind of displays some of our native trees and, and wildflowers. And this is a beautiful facility that you have. I understand that you hold events here. Correct. That we have this was the old community center. We have a, a facility that can uh, hold up to probably 400 people for a business event. They do proms here. We do lots of weddings. Uh, the rental uh, is taken care of through the. Uh, event planner, so we do have uh, all kinds of events that are held here. And when are the gardens open to the public? Well, our gardens right now, because of staffing, we with the outside of the garden is if the gates are open, we let people uh, wander through outside. But officially, we open up every third Thursday. We usually have a program, but with COVID nineteen, that's kind of thrown a wrench in our plans. It's kind of uh, we're we're moving toward maybe holding a Zoom meeting or some recorded meetings and but uh, typically every third Thursday uh, or we'll open for special events if we have a speaker or a program or a workshop. And then I understand that you can also um, rent the facility? Sure, yeah. You can, uh, uh, as far as uh, rental, you can rent the uh, what we call Lonely Paul, you can rent the garden. Uh, we have a lot of outdoor weddings, uh, and so, yes, there, there's a lot of rental uh, parties that are held here, and, uh, and you just have to contact the event planner. So I understand that you also hold plant sales here. Well, outside of rentals, our income uh, comes from plant sales. So those are our two, the two things uh, that the community, community can do to help support the gardens. Our plant sale, uh, we usually have a big spring plant sale, uh, usually the fourth weekend in April. Uh, this year, because of COVID-19, we weren't allowed uh, to have that. So it's kind of put a wrinkle in our fundraising this year. But what we're doing is we have, you can phone in and get an appointment and practice social distancing. And we can, you can call, and now we're doing appointments on Wednesday afternoons. Uh, you just call, make an appointment, you call 237 Six seven six six, and that's area code two five six uh, for the museum. And you can come in and purchase plants. And we usually open every third Thursday too. Our our we call it our plant adoption center, where you can come in and adopt a plant that we've propagated and grown. And the money goes uh, back to supporting the gardens. Thank you so much for your time today.